Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Hey, Calvary, thanks for tuning in today for your word for the day. My name is Robert. It's great to have you here. You know, one of the things that uh, being in ministry for a little while now I've seen come up over and over again is a sentiment that, that people who have not yet begun a relationship with Jesus think that they've got to get their house in order before that takes place. And by that, I mean, they think that they've got to, they've got to you know, get their life looking better than it is right now. And, and I, all the time I hear things like, man, if I set foot in church, the roof would collapse. And I remind them that, that our building here at the Sweetwater campus has really large steel beams. They're, they're pretty solid. It's masonry and steel. They're good. They're safe. But it's that sentiment that, hey, God would not be happy with me. I, I, my life is too dirty it to come before the God of the universe and follow him. And unfortunately, this is, this is wrong theology. This, this puts too much of the, the responsibility on us for our life to look and be a certain way. And it mitigates the power that God has to change our life. And so today we get to look at a story of, of how one of the disciples came to follow Jesus and what that can teach us about coming to God and finding grace and forgiveness in him. Because I think sometimes we forget that the disciples weren't picked from Bible study groups. They weren't, you know, in a seminary cohort and, you know, they're studying their Old Testament scrolls and, and learning all these things. And they go, oh yes, here's, here's the top of the class. Here, Jesus, here is your next disciple. So let's find out where some of these guys came from. So Matthew chapter 9 is our passage for today, uh, starting in verse 9. And it says this, as Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And he rose and followed him. And as Jesus reclined at table in the house, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came in and were reclining with Jesus and the disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard it, he said, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I came not to call the righteous, but the sinners. So here's Matthew, one of the disciples, being called and invited by Jesus into what became the most exclusive club in the history of the world, these group of 12 men that were Jesus' disciples. But he wasn't chosen, as I said, from a seminary group or even from the temple or even from a church uh, service in that day. But he's taken from the tax booth. He was a tax collector. Now, if you don't know, and uh, if you've been in church, you've probably heard this before, but tax collectors were hired by the government to collect taxes. In this case, he was collecting taxes for Rome, and he was collecting taxes from his fellow countrymen for a different country. So imagine your best friend starts working for another country in our world, collecting taxes for them. We don't like the IRS. Now imagine the IRS is a different country. Even more than that, it was very common in that day for tax collectors to, well, let's just say, make up their own numbers about how much people owed and keep some for themselves before passing it on to Rome. So the tax collectors were like the most reviled people in all of society. And that's who Jesus said, hey, why don't you come follow me? And the religious people were flabbergasted. They were shocked. Why is Jesus doing this? And Jesus did this to show a wonderful truth that it's not about the outside. It's not about what we, our lives look like, how good we can be for God or what we can do in terms of our good deeds and say, hey, God, here, look at how good I am. But it's about our desire to serve him and be faithful to him. And in this story, we get to see the grace of God available too. That Jesus can look past people's uh, mistakes, their lifestyle, their previous choices, and it can offer grace and forgiveness to them. So today, if you have ever been in the place of, uh, of feeling a little dirty because of things in your past, of going, yeah, God wouldn't love me because of what I've done, know that there's grace available. That, that Jesus' death on the cross means that all of our sins, past, present, and even the ones that we've not yet committed in the future, can be forgiven in full. 1 John 1, 1, 9 says that if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Our slate is wiped clean. We're given the second chance. We are made a new creation when we decide to follow Jesus. So we don't need to clean up our life. 
That's the Holy Spirit's role in our life. Once we say, hey, I'm committed to following Jesus, I'm in. The Holy Spirit gets to work. He starts changing our desires, our thoughts, our actions to better reflect the Son of God and Savior of the world, far more than we could ever do on our own. So today, understand that if you're not yet in a place of following Jesus, there's grace available. You don't have to do anything. You just have to simply confess that Jesus is the Son of God and Savior of the world. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you will be saved. If you have done that and still feel bad about the things in the past, understand that that God has forgiven you for those things. That God has made you a new creation because of Jesus. And you can have hope and you can have a new identity because of that amazing grace that Jesus provides. So I hope that you have a great day. I hope that you reflect on the grace available to you in Jesus and that it would change your life just like it did for Matthew and so many others. We'll see you next time.